how do you say uh, God in Arabic? Say Ilah. Illah. Illahi. Say Allah. Illah. No, Allah means the God. It's a contraction of Al, which means the, and Illah, which means God. You see, you don't even know Arabic, bro. We don't have that luxury of Jesus coming to us when we die. Yeah, he's him saying, do you want to come to me with heaven, to heaven? We don't have that luxury. That is unfair. I dare you to have a brain. I dare you to do just a tiny bit of research before you come out with that utter dawa script bollocks. When have you ever called Allah Abba? Never. Never. So but Jesus did, and he taught us to do that. So who's like Jesus, me or you? He's supposed to fix my garden, yeah? This contractor <laughs> messed everything up. Don't hire him. Okay. Don't, he's not a licensed contractor. I'm okay. telling you, he's going to mess up your job. You want your phone approach? Don't get a professional. Takir yeah? alert. Okay. Takir alert. Takir alert. <laughs> How are we you doing? Taking questions? Yes. Do you want yeah. to do questions about the Christian faith? Yes, please. Go on you then. You can take a couple of questions. Yeah. The first one is very simple. Um, just uh, your, if you have a personal relationship with Jesus. No, no, no. It's fine. Oh, you're fine. It's fine, it's fine. If, if, you have a, if, you, if you have a personal relationship with Jesus, yeah. what is it and how is it like it if you can describe it? Okay, that's fine. We need to we need to separate in our language, language that is said in church from theological language. So the idea of a personal relationship with Jesus is church language. Theological language is saying that we can know Christ, that, that person that lived 2,000 years ago, in a mystical way, in, in, through the communion, through the communication of scripture, through the activity of the sacraments, through the, the work of the Holy Spirit who communicates Christ's presence to us, and through the work of the church, which is Christ's body on earth. So that's what that personal relationship with Jesus looks like. And uh, the other question was uh, relating to uh, God's name. Yep. So in the Old Testament, it says the eternal name of God is Yahweh. Yep. Hallelujah. But uh, in the, on the cross, when Jesus was uh, getting crucified, yep. he screamed out, Eli, Eli. Yeah. Why say Eli and not Yahweh? Yeah, because um, in the same way that we say God, we don't say Yahweh. When, we, when a Christian says God, who is he talking to? I'm asking you. And who is God? For us? For you? Jesus. You, you, you know the answer to this. It's Yahweh. It's Yahweh, bro. I don't, I, I, you know, Muslims never do themselves any favors by being deliberately obtuse. You knew the answer to the question. You simply avoided giving the obvious answer. That kind of brown, that, I know your name is Mr. Brown, but that kind of brown point scoring just makes you look silly. So, so yeah, so let me, let me, let me answer your question. So, Eli Eli Sabachthani is quoting a psalm. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That, that, that psalm is prophesying a crucifixion before crucifixion occurs before crucifixion happens. Like it, it's in the time of David, which is a thousand years BC, when crucifixion was only invented 600 years BC. So Christ is crying out on the cross, referring to a prophecy that's talking about what's happening to him at that exact moment in time. And that's why he says, Eli, Eli, Sabachthani. Now, does that mean in the same way that I say God, that I don't think God's name is Yahweh. No, of course it doesn't. Jesus' name, Yeshua, in the Hebrew, literally means Yahweh saves. So Christ himself is named after Yahweh. So, you, you know, your argument is based on selective text use and ignoring the rest of the Bible. Next question. Okay. And uh, if... Jesus is God, right? Why was he praying in the Garden of Gethsemane 
to remove this cup away from me. The cup, a lot of Christian theologists say that the cup symbolized the, the torment and the torture in the cross. Yep. And he's saying, remove this cup away from me. Not my will be done, your will. Yes. Yeah. So if Jesus is God, why is he who, why is he worship praying to another God to remove the punishment away from him? Yeah. And if he's God, why why would he need to be uh, praying and then and then going to a cross when he's all powerful God? Okay. So so I, I'll try and answer those questions. You know that we Christians believe in one God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, you, you've been around this park enough that you should know that. If you haven't learned that yet, if you haven't learned that, then you, you're, you're basically ignorant and you've learned nothing in all your years here. We believe as Christians that the Son speaks and has always communed with the Father, always. And when the Son becomes a man, he continues to do so. But now he's doing it as a man. And so when men speak to God in heaven, they pray because Christ has become fully man. He prays to his father. It is a continuation of the same discourse that he had before the incarnation. But now it's done as a man. Now, why does he say, not my will, but yours be done? We Christians believe Christ had two wills, a divine will, and a human will. That human will is subject to the passions and the desires of the flesh. That human will doesn't wish to suffer, doesn't wish to die. It seeks pleasure, not pain. That's human nature. You do it, I do it. So the, 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 the human will, those passions, have to be submitted to the divine will, which is to go to the cross. In the same Gospel of Luke that talks about Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane, Christ prophesies three times that he is going to be crucified and rise on the third day. Now, why does Christ need to go to the cross, which was your, third, your, your second main question. Why does Christ need to go to the cross? It's because humanity, our flesh, your flesh, my flesh, everyone's flesh, this entire world, its cosmos, is corrupted by sin and the fruits of sin is death. Christ dies on the cross to consume death in the flesh. And then by consuming flesh in the death, he conquers the power of death over our lives so that we can have eternal life. Thanks, Bob. I mean, brilliant answer. I asked the same question and the brother over there couldn't give me a brilliant answer. Amazing. So uh, if, if Christ came to uh, prevent us from dying in sinful nature, what about the people uh, before Jesus? Are they saved as well by this sinful nature? Yep. So, so I, I want to be clear, Mr. Brown, you're already dead in your sins. You're a dead man walking. You are a corpse. You're, be apocalypse, yeah? you're, you're, you are a corpse, bro. You, your, your soul is dead to God because you have rejected um, God's Messiah. You've rejected the Christ. And, and yes, you have. Let me finish my argument. You're dead. All of those who don't submit to Christ are dead in their sin. You will have to answer for your sin because Christ is not answering for your sin. So you need to consider that profoundly because on the day of judgment, you will have to answer for every evil thought, every evil word and every evil deed you have ever done. And you have no defense. You'll, you'll have no defense. I, I do have a defense. Let, let, me, let me finish my, my point. You asked about the people before Christ. Christ's salvific work is communicated forward in time across the world and down through the ages. All grace that is communicated by any temple sacrifice is the merit of Christ. All grace that is communicated to anyone at any time is the merit of Christ. Christ himself descended to the souls that were in Hades so that even those before Christ had the opportunity to accept Christ as their savior. It says that in scripture. You say Hades. Hades. As in Hades. 
Hades, H-A-D-E-S. Hades. So, so Jesus went to the place of the dead so that even those who are dead have the opportunity to embrace Christ, and they do. Bob, how is that um, fair? How is that fair? Yeah, because let me give you my point, right? Yeah. So these vast murderers, rapists, murderers, uh, child killers, pagans, uh, the worshippers of Baal, yeah? These people, um, they were, they died, yeah? As an atheist, as a pagan, yeah? As a worshipper of Baal. Here comes Jesus in the grave. They're getting tormented. And Jesus comes and says, hey, I can save you. Believe in me. Yep. Wouldn't you just take it? Or would you say, no, 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 I still reject you. You're in hell, you're getting punished, and God comes to save you. Of course, you're going to take it. But then, us now, we're living, or the, the dead afterwards don't have that pleasure. So, the people who have died before Jesus have had that pleasure. People after Jesus don't have the pleasure. Where is the fairness? Okay, so, so allow me to address uh, n the number of points that you made there. Firstly, Muslims themselves believe that on taking the Shahada, all your previous sins are forgiven. That you could be a rapist, a murderer, an atheist, a worshipper, a Baal, but if you say the Shahada, your slate is wiped clean. Can I correct you a little bit? Wait, let me, one, let, you can come back in your time. Secondly, you, you actually superimposed an Islamic belief onto Christianity. We don't believe in the torture in the grave. That's an Islamic belief, it's not a Christian belief. You need to be wary of superimposing Islamic beliefs onto Christianity unconsciously without recognizing that you're dealing with a very different religion. Hades is a place where the souls are kept before Christ. That's it. It's not a place of torment and torture. It is also used to refer to hell, but the language is just being used differently there. The place that Christ descends to is a place where the souls are kept, not where the souls are tortured. Now, in terms of the fairness of it, Christ himself tells the story of Lazarus and the rich man at his gate. Do you know that parable? So Christ tells the story of Lazarus, who was a poor man at the gate of a rich man. He was covered in sores and boils. So ill was he that even the dogs would come and lick his wounds. And the rich man wouldn't even give him the crumbs from his table to feed him. He was so unjust. And the unjust man went to hell and the Lazarus went to the bosom of Abraham, which is a, a way of saying heaven, to enjoy the fruits of paradise. And in this parable that Christ is telling, the rich man is able to see Lazarus in heaven and call out to him and say, Lazarus, you know, give me just a drop of water to quench my thirst. And then Lazarus replies, the, there's a, a barrier between where we live and I can't cross it. I can't come to help you. So the rich man says, well, send, send someone to speak to my brothers so that they don't suffer the same fate. Hold on, one second. We seem to have maybe... Nope, fair enough. No, no, we're all right. No fights yet. So then Lazarus says something, which is the message for you, that they have the law of Moses and the prophets. If they don't listen to them, even if a man rises from the dead, they still will not believe. The reality is... If you deliberately, as you do, as you do, Mr. Brown, turn your heart away from God, not even a miracle can convince you otherwise. Because you have hardened your heart to God, like Pharaoh hardened his heart to God. Like every sinner hardens their heart to God. You, you, you need to stop doubling down on your hatred of the truth. You need to be open to what Christians are saying and the evidence that we're giving and consider it fairly. Because your hard heart is what is... Uh, no miracle can undo that if you're in that mindset. But for me, that explanation didn't make any sense whatsoever because at the end of the day, those people who are... If they're getting stored like a storage bag or, or bodies, dead souls in a grave and it's just been kept there all this eternity and then God comes and says, hey, the pagans, the, the, the whoever, the, the, the worshippers of Baal, hey, you want to come to heaven with me? Of course they're going to jump on the idea to go to heaven. How yeah? do you know? But you're, you're in a grave. You're in Hades. You're in Hades. Yeah. A place where all the dead souls are kept. Yep. And then God comes. Yep. Not your Baal. Yeah. But God comes. Yep. You're going to still reject him. Shall I prove you wrong? 
Your, your, your own hadiths tell your own hadiths tell a story in the Quran uh, about the day of judgment and in that story it says that the thing that people worshipped will appear before them and they will follow the thing that they worshipped so those that worship the sun will follow the sun those that worship the moon will follow the moon and then ridiculously it says those that worship the cross will follow the cross which is ultimately ridiculous because Christians don't worship the cross it just shows how ignorant the writers of the hadiths were and then it says that those that worshipped those that worshipped Allah will say we are waiting for our Lord and Allah comes to them in a shape and they say no 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 we're, we're waiting for our Lord to come in a shape that we recognize and then he goes away and he comes back in a shape that they recognize and then they follow him that's in your hadiths now think about that for a minute that means that there were Muslims who saw a godlike sun come and a godlike moon come and a godlike cross come and they didn't follow it so it isn't necessarily the case that just even on judgment day that people will suddenly be convinced by the first thing that they see so your own hadith literature disproves your argument then then you explain that are you explain to me why everybody didn't follow the sun you're trying to straw man me now with my hadith are, 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 do you recognize the hadith as a real one i'm not familiar with that hadith so i'll have to look into it and I don't think, Bob, you quite really understand how hadiths really work. You know, when they're collecting information, they also collect the fake news and put it in there. Shall we see if it's a... So now what Christians do, like people like David Woods and stuff like that, they take the fake news... So you're saying it's a fake hadith? I, I can't tell you if it's fake or... or so why are you trying to... If you, if you so can't, why are you trying to suggest it's fake if you again, can't? Bob, why are you trying to suggest trying to it's fake? me with my book you don't believe in it anyway do you believe in my hadith no no so why are you trying to show me on my hadith bob, i'll answer saying, that question what i'm saying is bob seriously yeah what i'm saying is that people in 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 hades yeah they're in their grave but us we don't have that luxury of jesus coming to us when we die yeah he's him saying do you want to come to me with heaven to heaven we don't have that luxury that is unfair so you you, you here, here's what you did like every good, like every good dai, you lied through your face, and here's the reason why you lied through your face, because you tried to you tried to besmirch a hadith that I'm quoting, as if it was fake. When you have admitted, you don't know if it's fake or sahih. One second, one second, one second. So so what? So so the hadith. The reason. So so the reason why just just throwing the word straw man into a, a, an argument doesn't. Doesn't mean you've made a point. Yeah, you've actually you misused you the term straw man. You, you've misused the term straw man. You don't know what you've, you don't even know what the term straw man means, Mr. Brown. That was not a straw man. What I was pointing out to you is that from your own religion, you don't believe, you cannot believe from your own religion the premise that you're arguing against the Christ's appearance in Hades. Because your argument that you made against Christ appearing in Hades was that, of course, everyone will see Christ, recognize that he's a savior and go to heaven. But your own hadiths refute the premise because the hadiths state that on the day of judgment, people will follow what they used to worship. And the Muslims will not follow the cross, they won't follow the sun and they won't follow the moon. Which means that just because you see it, even on the day of judgment, doesn't mean you'll be convinced that that's the thing to follow and worship. Do you have so, the full context of that hadith? My point to you is, bro, you yeah, we can pull it up and look into it if you want to. But my point to you is that your argument, your, like every good da'i, you're arguing from premises that aren't even Islamic. Hey, Bob, you have to admit it is unfair because if you die now, you ain't going to see your savior like the same way those people who rejected God instead of worship Baal, gave child as a sacrifice. Yeah. Those people had the luxury of seeing God coming to them when they're in, in Hades, yeah? But you as a believer who's preaching to the world, yeah, don't have that luxury. How is that fair, Bob? And how do you, and how do you know that every worshiper of Baal accepts Christ in Hades? I'm not saying if they did or not, but logically but your whole thinking, argument is logically based on that. Thinking, logically thinking, right? You're 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 kept there. You don't know what's going on. Your God, uh, Baal is not coming to the rescue. All of a sudden, you've heard about this guy named Jesus or whatever, or whatever, right? And he suddenly comes to you. What do you think is going to happen? So let me. You're going to have obviously straight away change of heart. 
Yes, my lord, take me. No, again, you're making an assumption. You're making an assumption that isn't even so, true then, to your own religion. But then uh, we can assume, even if Jesus went to the, uh, Hades, right? He did. We can assume those people rejected him, even in Hades. You can't assume that either. But then, but then you can't assume that I'm wrong. No, I can assume that you're wrong because you're making you're, you're making two fabricated you're making two fabricated assumptions. All I am saying here's what I believe okay. happens when Christ descended to Hades: that the souls of the righteous, those who had sought to follow God through natural law, the souls of the righteous, those who had sought to follow God through the Mosaic law, will accept Christ. But those um, reprobates, those who hardened their heart to the Lord, like Pharaoh. Those who rejected, bearing in mind, Pharaoh witnessed the great miracles of God and still rejected them. Those souls in Hades that will have that temperament, that bent to reject Yahweh on earth, will reject Christ in Hades. That's what I believe. Now, here's the point. Your religion teaches the same thing. Your religion teaches that on the Day of Judgment, your Hadith state that on the Day of Judgment, the people will see the shape of the thing that they worship. Those that worship the moon, those that worship the sun, those that worship the cross, and those that worship Allah. And each will follow the thing that they worshipped. Now the fact that you don't know your hadiths as good as I know your hadiths, Mr. Brown, is not my problem. That is your problem. And this is a Sahih hadith, by the way. Okay, fair enough. Right? So, and like a good Dai, when the hadiths work against you, you chuck them under the bus. No, 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 me, I don't, I never chuck my hadiths or my book under the bus. We've, we've got you on all camera say, chucking your hadiths under the bus. All I say is that I don't know that verse. I haven't, hadith. Studied, I haven't studied the hadith yet, and uh, I'm not familiar with it. I am familiar with a similar story what you just said but is, is something completely yeah. you know different if i can just uh, i can tell you about it quickly as well that we believe on the day of resurrection yeah. when the souls are resurrected they will uh, ultimately follow whatever they believed in because like which you know, is when, what i said that you whatever, said i was making up whatever whatever they were doing so if they were alcoholic they'll wake up in that state yeah or being drunk if they were a drug addict they'll wake up in that state of being drunk if they are a follower of Christ, they'll wake up in the state of following Christ, yeah? The state that they died in, that's the state that they will be raised up in. Yep. That's what we believe, yep. yeah? There's no thing about, oh, they're going to be still following and worshipping that cross or whatever. No, I, I don't know about that part, Bob, but I know just partial of that. And that's what I've been taught. I haven't been told the whole thing with the whole context and everything, yeah? yeah? There are contexts to everything. Yeah? But your ignorance but, of your religion is not my problem, but, Mr. But, Brown. Bob, at the end of the day, you still have to admit it is unfair. No, it isn't. It is. The people, the people, the people in Hades are given a choice, just like the people on Earth are given a choice. You, you, bro Mr. Brown, you are presented with a choice to become a follower of Christ or not. You are presented with the choice to accept the Messiah of the Jewish people. The one that God established a covenant with, the one that God sent the temp the, the one that God sent his prophets to. You have that choice. But you, like all the Dai in the park, have hardened your heart unto the Lord. You've hardened your heart to the truth. You come out with you come out with sound bites. You don't come out with arguments. You come out with scripts. You don't come out with sincere questions. You come out with cliches. You don't come out with learning and you attack something you don't understand. And, and, and I'm inviting you to, to rise above such, such a, a childish way of conducting yourself, to, to be, become a true seeker after the truth, and to genuinely consider whether we Christians might have a point that your book calls Isa the Messiah, and yet you don't have any understanding of what that term means, or why the word Messiah is significant. Tell me, why does the Quran call Isa the Messiah? Uh, I don't know, Bob. You have to speak to somebody who's studied uh, the field of Islam. Yeah. Uh, I'm just here to ask some questions and hopefully get some answers from you, so I can learn and understand better. Okay. I'll yeah. let you. I'll let you continue to ask questions about Christianity, just just to show that we do do take questions about Christianity. Hopefully, final point. If we can have a, a, a light debate afterwards, yeah, not now, but in a little while after you, you know. So basically, what you said about Muslims, right? So basically, what I wanted to say was, there isn't a single faith apart from Christianity and Islam. There isn't a single faith in the whole entire globe. 
that believes in Jesus the way we believe in Jesus, he was born miraculously, that, um, and there isn't a single faith in the world, Alimi, including you as well, that prays, apart from Islam, that prays the same way that Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. There isn't, apart from the Jews, we follow what Jesus did, which is part of the Mosaic law, which is to refrain from eating pork, alcohol, and get circumcised. Christians don't do any of those things, yeah, but we do it. But Can wait, I reply? Pop, pop, pop. Can I reply? Yeah, I'm not finishing. Okay. Just, and when your Jesus comes back, and he, he says, bring those enemies of mine who did not want me to be king over them, yep. bring them in front of me and slay them, yep. that's not, that does not include the Muslims. Why? Because as Muslims, we do not reject Jesus as being king of this world. We will not reject him. So that verse would not apply to us. It will apply to 90% of the globe. Yeah? Can I, can I reply? Right now, 90% of the globe do not believe in Jesus. Only one religion in the world still believes in Jesus, believes in his miracle, and follows what he did and said. Yeah? Can I reply now? So now, but there isn't anybody else. Can I reply now? What would happen to them and what would happen to us? Can now I reply you now? Go? Yes, sir. So you remember what I said about repeating the script? <laughs> right? That is a perfect example of the script. Let, let's just let's just unpack that script a little. Okay. Let's just unpack that okay. script a little. Firstly, this idea that Christians don't pray like Jesus demonstrates again, Mr. Brown, your complete and utter ignorance of the Christian faith. We Christians prostrate in our prayers. I did it last Sunday. Yes, bro, head to the ground. We do that in our prayers. No, don't interrupt. Listen, I am telling you that when it comes to Christianity, you should shut up because you don't know what you're talking about. You are an ignoramus when it comes to speaking. When it comes to speaking. Stop attacking Listen, listen. When it comes to Christianity, you are a total ignoramus. If you had done 10 minutes worth of research before you came out with that utter baloney, you would have seen on YouTube Christians using prostration in prayer. Do it now in front of us on camera. YouTube it. Just put Christians prostrating. Christians prostration in prayer and you will find thousands of videos of Christians prostrating in prayer. So, first point of your script. Want yes, bro. When they're, when they're yes, like bro. This. How do you get a chance yes, to pray? Yes, bro. Where do you get to chance to pray? Right. Okay. Okay. So, so bro, if you're not willing to if you're not willing to do the research, are you willing to do it right now? Go on, do it do it right now. I dare you to have a brain. <laughs> I dare you to do just a tiny bit of research before you come out with that utter dawa script bollocks. Next question. Wait one second. No, you made a lot of points. I'm going to reply to those points. The next point you made is that Jesus didn't eat pork, but we Muslims don't eat pork. And so therefore we are like Jesus and you are not. Well, bro. Jesus kept the Sabbath, Muslims don't keep, you see he's not even listening, so I'll just talk to the camera. So, Jesus kept the Sabbath, Muslims don't keep the Sabbath. Christians keep the Sabbath, so we're like Jesus, Muslims aren't like Jesus. Christians believe that Jerusalem is the holy city, Jesus believes that Jerusalem is the holy city, Muslims don't believe that Jerusalem is a holy city. They just believe that the mosque in the Temple Mount is holy. They don't believe that the city is holy. We're like Jesus, not like you. Jesus believed in the temple, the priesthood, and the sacrifices. Muslims don't believe in the temple, the priesthood, and the sacrifices. We Christians believe in the temple, the priesthood, and the sacrifices. So we're like Jesus, you're not like Jesus. This kind of simplistic, cherry-picking argument is based upon your ignorance, not your knowledge. Furthermore, you brought up the issue of circumcision. Circumcision is the covenant made with Abraham. And it was re renewed as part of the covenant of Moses. But in the new covenant, the one that Jesus establishes in his body and his blood, you don't need circumcision anymore. Because the circumcision is of the heart, not of the body. But why get circumcised? So one second, one second. So once again, you're demonstrating your ignorance. 
The reality is, Mr. Brown, this kind of logic of cherry picking, oh, we do this like Jesus, but you do, don't, don't do this like Jesus. It works against you. Jesus didn't eat camel meat. Muhammad ate camel meat. So I don't eat camel meat, but you can eat camel meat. The Jews don't eat camel meat. So now the Jews are like Jesus. I, don't, I can eat camel meat if I want to. You can, can eat camel meat like you want to. So the, now the Jews are like Jesus, but neither of us are like Jesus. So this is the sort of silly line, line of argument and it's based on your ignorance, Mr. Brown. Your ignorance. Now, you talked about, you talked about the one religion that's like Jesus. Jesus founded a covenant on himself. That was the new covenant given in his body and his blood. Do you accept that the covenant of Jesus is given in his body and his blood? Do you accept that or not? No. Then you're not like Jesus, I'm like Jesus. Because I believe what Jesus taught, you don't believe what Jesus taught. Jesus said, pray to God and call him your father. Have you ever called Allah your father? No. So I'm like Jesus, you're not like Jesus because I say the Our Father. Jesus' normal way of praying was standing up, looking to heaven. Can a Muslim look to heaven when they pray in Salat? Yes. Lie. Lie. You lie. You see, you don't even know your own religion. In Salat, in Salat, you have to look to the ground. No, you have to look to the ground. You've only been told to look to the ground, but we can look up. We can't look straight. You can look ground, down, or you can look up, but you can't look straight. Let's, yeah? In Salat, Muslims look to the ground where they're going yeah, to prostrate. We are, we, exactly, that's what we've been told, taught. But we can also look up. If you have an image at the ground, you can look up. If you, if you have an image at the ground. Yeah. Right, but some normally... Of the, some of the mats, some of the mats, prayer mats, or even your whole mats, yeah. they come with images. Right. So if we're praying here in the grass and there's images... Which way would you look? Here, yeah. We, we, if there wasn't an image, which way would you look? We look up. We, if there wasn't an image, which way would you look? If there wasn't no image, you look on the ground. So the normative position of prayer is to look which direction? Ground. The normative position of prayer for the Jews, and that means Jesus, was to look to heaven. So I pray like Jesus, you don't pray like Every Jesus. Every prophet prayed with their face down, just like Moses no. and Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. You, you're, you're, you're totally wrong. I am not wrong here. All the prophets prayed, fell down on their face and prayed. Yeah. Bro, bro, the normative position in prayer for Jews is to pray standing, looking to heaven. It does not mean that they can't, one second, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that they don't prostrate. We Christians prostrate, but the normative position of Christians, like Jesus, is to stand in prayer, looking to heaven. That is the normative position of prayer. The normative position of prayer for Muslims is to stand at the beginning looking down to the ground. So you don't pray like Jesus. You don't call him our father like Jesus did, like Jesus taught. You don't even have that concept. Jesus, you, Jesus, you don't have that concept. When have you ever called Allah Abba? Never. Never. So but Jesus did and he taught us to do that. So who's like Jesus, me or you? It depends on the Jewish context, yeah. Because Depen on the Jew on the depends Jewish, on the Jewish context. On the Jewish context, yeah. It, it, so give me a Jewish called, context. They're, they're called Yahweh Father because they don't want to say his name. Okay. Yahweh, some of them, yeah. Right. So Yahweh. Look, there's a, there's another one. Jesus he, called. Jesus understood God to be named Yahweh. What's the name of God in your religion? Allah. So not Yahweh. It's Eli. So not so not Yahweh. No. No. There you go. Yeah, so I'm like I'm like Jesus. But you're not like Jesus. But then Jesus on the cross said, Eli, Eli. If I say God, not Yahweh, God, Yahweh. Eli, no, Eli, Eli. Eli, Eli, Eli. No, you see. Aramaic. You, Aramaic. No, that. And what, what does Aramaic Eli mean? Means, means God. Yeah. So in Arabic, if you say in Eli. Arabic, how do you say uh, God in Arabic? Say Eli. Allah. Eli. Allah. Allah. No, Allah means the God. It's a contraction of Al which means the, and illa, which means God. You see, you don't even know Arabic, bro. We're going into, we're going into semantics now. Okay. Oh, okay, semantics that you brought up. So the, last, the last part, if you can just address what I said about how we Muslims believe in Jesus, but the 90% of the globe does not. Okay, let me address that point. Thank you. Muslims don't believe in Jesus. They don't believe in Jesus at all. The, the Isa that they believe in, the one described in their Quran, let me, let me finish. The Isa, 
that is described in their Quran is nothing like the Yeshua described in the New Testament. The New Testament figure that we call Jesus looks nothing like the Isa that is described in the Quran. Muslims do not believe in the same person that Christians believe in. Christians believe that Christ was crucified and died on a cross. Do you believe that Christ died on a cross? No. no. Christians believe that Christ was God on earth. Do you believe that Christ was God on earth? No. So, 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 the God of Islam, the Isa of Islam, and the Yeshua of Christianity are completely different figures. Everyone, everyone, Mr. Brown, Mr. Brown. I agree. Thank you, Mr. Brown agrees. So, so, one second. So, when we say, when we talk about the fact that on Judgment Day, people will be judged for not believing in Jesus, Muslims will be judged by God for not believing in Jesus. You will be amongst the losers on the Day of Judgment. And all of those people, all of those people, all of, now notice the triggered Muslims, all of those people that tell you that Islam and Christianity teach the same, they are lying to you. Your politicians are lying to you. Your teachers are lying to you. Your cultural magnates, your celebrities that say all the religions teach the same. They're lying to you. Your imam lying to you. Your priest who says that is lying to you. Can I get some water? So now, now this will accumulate to our what we're going to discuss about a topic I picked. Yeah. So you've said it yourself. The Jesus you follow is completely to the ones that we follow, right? And now this is the topic I want to choose, right? I want to prove to you from your own Bible that the Jesus you follow, water, bro, water. The Jesus you worship is actually Lucifer. I'm going to prove it from your own Bible. And I want to have that uh, discussion with you, Bob, in five minutes if possible. Because I need a little five minutes break if you want to have a five minutes break. Come back. Have water, Come yeah? back. Okay, so bro, you, you were very vocal. What was your point? What's your point? I said, well, this is a problem. I don't want to be filmed. Okay. Okay, you don't have to be filmed. You stand there. I don't want to be with you. You don't want to be with me, but you, you were heckling me a minute ago, so now I'm going to heckle you.